This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. The views expressed by guests on this program do not necessarily represent the views of the host or owners of the Doggy Diva Show and do not necessarily constitute endorsement of products. Medical information discussed by guests on this program are those of the guests and is only for informational purposes and should not replace medical advice by your local veterinarian professional. Hi, this is Susan Marie from the Doggy Diva Show. Do you plan on celebrating the 4th of July with your pets? Is your pet fearful of fireworks? Well, our health and lifestyle expert, Monica Layton, is here, and she's going to share some great advice with us on this topic. And the story of a Purple Heart veteran who was saved from the depths of PTSD by a kitten named Scout. And safe holiday food tips from Bill Jack. That's what's on our show today. Let's get started. Hey, did you hear that? What is that? It's the bark heard round the world. The Doggy Diva Show. Here's Susan Marie. Welcome everyone to the Doggy Diva Show, the show for animal lovers. I am your host, Susan Marie, and as always, I am joined by my canine co-hosts, the Doggy Divas themselves, Francesca, Coco, and our newest little diva, Miss Olive. Thank you for joining us today as we bring the experts in the pet and animal world right to you. So go grab a cup of coffee and your pet's favorite treat, and we'll be back in just a moment. Hey, cat people, litter box smells always on your mind. Think about your cat, not the box, with World's Best Cat Litter, the litter that delivers big odor control in a tiny package. World's Best Cat Litter harnesses the concentrated power of corn to trap odors deep inside the litter. Ready to knock out smells and use less litter? Find World's Best Cat Litter at Target, Walmart, and in your local grocery and pet stores. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back. and We have our Pet Tip of the Week with Monica Layton and big holiday coming up, 4th of July. Why don't you help us celebrate with our pets safely? Hi, good morning. So yes, 4th of July is coming up. It is a really fun day of the year to celebrate. And of course, we want our entire family to enjoy the holiday, not just us. Um, so just a couple of tips in regards to 4th of July. I know we've talked about this, you know, with different holidays and in the past, but just a reminder, um, food. <laughs> Fourth of July is a great day to barbecue, have people over. So always be cautious, um, you know, secondhand food, table scraps, always giving your pet its own space to retreat to. Um, if you have people over, sometimes, you know, noise levels and people going in and out. Um, and of course, you know, you never know when those fireworks are going to start because, in my neighborhood, they've, they, they're already going. <laughs> they always start, you know, the weekend before and randomly, you know, he'll neighbors start, you know, putting them off. And my dog likes to bark excessively as she runs around. So not only is she scared, but she feels like if she barks at them loud enough that they'll stop. She hasn't quite figured out that that's not going to work yet, but she's really insistent that it is. And she does it intently during every single loud noise she hears. So when we were working on um, having her kind of relax a little bit with 4th of July, um, last year a product was launched by Zoetis, which is Pfizer's side of um, the animal health line. And it's called Cilio. Um, I, I always affectionate call it the silly dog drug. Uh, because of the name and it helps me remember it. But, um, Cilio is a noise aversion anti anxiety drug. So, 4th of July, they launched it last year. And I have always had really good success with composure, zilkeen, things of that nature. Um, they're all natural, no issues. Um, but I was having to give quite a bit of a dose. 
Um, and as you know, with Composures and Zolkines, we talked about you can double to triple the dose without any issues. Um, but it takes a little time to get on board. And sometimes when the neighbors will randomly start setting fireworks off, you know, three, four days beforehand, you always don't have that notice and it's not always in the system. And then it's taking her, you know, a good 45 minutes to an hour to start calming down. And by that time, they're pretty anxious and you're having to give, you know, quite a large dose um, to get the effect you need with some of the composures and the Zulkines. The Cilio I tried out last year um, for the first time because it was brand new. Our rep had brought in a couple of sample packages for me, um, for my dog specifically to try out because it wasn't even being shipped to the office yet. And um, I cannot rave about this drug anymore. Um, it was fantastic. Um, how Cilio is applied is it's actually a gel and they have a long syringe it comes in and the syringe has dots on it and the dots are a dosage based dot system so you would look on the sheet they give you find your pet's weight and it'll tell you whether you give one dot or two dots etc so all you do is they have like this little guided clip on there and you put the clip on the number of dots you need and you squirt it in the mouth now this is very important you never put it directly into the mouth with this drug because it will not absorb as well. It goes in between the cheek and the gum line. So you can either go in the top of the mouth, bottom of the mouth, but you want it to actually be between the gum line above the teeth or below the teeth and the side of the cheek. And it absorbs in extremely fast. Um, I can tell you I used it on all three of my dogs. The one that is the obsessive barker, no joke, within five minutes, that dog was quiet all night long. Now, keep in mind, this is my daughter's dog who is extremely rambunctious, very high energy. It did not sedate her at the least. We were literally outside playing ball with this dog who, I mean, it, she's a barker to begin with. But when it came to fireworks, we could never. I mean, we were always loud music inside the house to kind of drown out the noise. Lots of composure, having to put her in her crate because she would go nuts and just run around in circles barking constantly. And she was outside playing ball, enjoying the evening. I mean, it was just remarkable how well this dog did, did not sedate her at all, did not have a care in the world, was quiet, enjoyed herself in our yard, you know, with us all evening long. And it was just like as if nothing else was happening in the sky. Um, so it was phenomenal. Now, I have two other dogs, and we have an older toy poodle. And one of the side effects of Cilio is GI issues, of course, with anything. And um, some of them can get tired. Very few have this issue, but my poodle did. And it wasn't alarming. There was nothing. It didn't stagger. It wasn't. But she was a little on the sleepy side. She would still get up, go outside, nothing abnormal, nothing to be alarmed with. But she did get a little tired from the medication. So that can be an issue. It can be seen. Um, but what I really like about the Cilio is how quick it comes on board. Um, they say to do it, you know, just like everything else, you know, try to do at least a half hour before. But I can tell you, our dog, when we had gotten home the first time I tried it, was a couple days before 4th of July. And um, my daughter dances until like 7.30 on Friday nights. And we came home. And our neighbors were already setting stuff out. And we have the dogs with us um, at the office all day. So we had the dogs in the car. And immediately when we got to the house... It was noise all around. And I'm like, okay, well, let's see what I was going to do. And, you know, we gave her her little doses in the cheek. And like I said, within five minutes, that dog was running around the backyard enjoying itself with not a care in the world. And those fireworks were going for a good hour. And 4th of July, um, one thing they do say with that is that it's twice a day dosing. Um, you can even go every, you know, six hours or so. I gave her one dose, and they were fine all day long. Wow. Now, this is a prescription. You have to get it through your vet. It's not like composure. Could you just give the correct spelling of it? Because I know that this sounds, this is like a phenomenal drug, which I have to get for one of mine because she's exactly the way yours is, and I know which one you're talking about. Um, so can you give the correct spelling of it so that I'm sure that there are people listening to this going, I have to have this. So let's give out the correct spelling so that they could talk to their vets about it. 
Yes, it's called Cilio, so it's S I L E O, and it's made by Zoetis Animal Health, which is the animal division of Pfizer uh, Pharmaceuticals. And you, you do need to get it from a veterinarian. As long as you have been seeing the veterinarian and you don't have any, you know, huge issues, it's a very low side effect issue. It can be given to dogs that have um, different illnesses and on different medications. It can be intertwined with, you know, anything that your pet is on without having any kind of side effects. So it's very, very safe. Um, but yes, it does have to be given through a veterinarian. Wow, this is a great tip. Great tip for those of us who have high anxiety dogs around 4th of July with the fireworks because that is something that I think some pet owners uh, live in fear of. We love them, but on the other ha- <laughs> the other side of the spectrum, we go, oh no, because our dogs just go berserk. So I thank you, Monica. This is a great tip and uh, have a happy 4th of July. Thank you so much. And remember, just keeping them safe and low key can really, really do wonders because unfortunately, 4th of July is one of the highest days for shelters because so many pets get scared and take off. So really, really keep a close eye on your pet the holiday. Coming up next, a Purple Heart veteran was saved from the depths of depression and PTSD by a kitten. Stay with us. Well, she's sitting curled up on my lap as we speak. <laughs> Beautiful Bella is my long-haired Dotson. She was thrown out of a pickup truck going 30 miles an hour, and she disappeared into the woods with the wild animals, uh, boars and coyotes. About four weeks later, she just appeared, and she was a mess. Her fur was matted. She scratched almost nonstop. My friend suggested that I order this stuff called Dinovite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. She gobbles it up. She has been itch-free ever since, and her fur is gorgeous. Anyone out there who has a rescue dog, start them on a Dinovite diet for at least a 90-day period. They bond better with the people who take good care of them. They are going to be your buddy for a very, very long time. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. And today we're going to be talking about Josh and Scout. It's the latest film from Mutual Rescue with millions of views on YouTube. Miss Olive and I, Miss Olive and I have been, gosh, we've viewed it so many times. It's such a powerful and inspirational film. And in it, we follow a brave young soldier from a battlefield in Iraq where he sustained traumatic injuries in a mortar attack to Fort Riley, Kansas. And there, during a thunderstorm, a kitten suddenly appears to save the soldier's life then later disappears only to reappear at another pivotal moment in their lives. At the, after the battle's over, PTSD, we find out, is a silent killer of our soldiers. And our guest today is Purple Heart veteran Josh Marino, whose PTSD, anxiety, and depression became overwhelming after he was wounded in Iraq. And he is the feature with his companion cat, Scout, from Animal Welfare Initiative Mutual Rescue. And welcome, Josh, and thank you so much for serving our country. You're more than welcome. Thank you. How did Scout the cat impact your life when your PTSD made you your most vulnerable? How did... It's such a wonderful story. Well, it started, as you said, on a on a really cold, rainy night back in the fall of 2008. Actually, 2007. It might have been 2008. <laughs> the, the year wasn't that important. The, uh, I was in a, a really dark place, and I was actually experiencing a crisis of lethality. I was, I was quite ready to kill myself to take my own life. And right at that moment when I felt like nobody else was really caring about me, nobody really wanted me around, nobody loved me, all of a sudden there was a little meow from the bushes right beside me. And in the rain, this little tiny kitten just hopped his way out and made his way up onto my lap and sat me there and kept me sitting down so I could, I could understand exactly that there really was something that's cared about me. 
I could still love. Now, can you describe the like the positive shift? What happened? How, what happened to you from that? For months after I returned from combat, I was feeling like I was somebody who was uh, unnecessary, almost expendable, and I, I really felt like I was out of the loop. And that's one of the really rough things that people deal with PTSD every day. You never know when it's going to affect you or how it's going to affect you. And in my case, it made me feel like I was just a sack of damaged goods. And whenever Scout made his appearance in my life at that pivotal moment, it was it was like the it was like providence. All of a sudden, something happened into my life and and made me realize that yes, there is there is still something that cares. I do I do still have a purpose here. And I was right then and there. It was a 180 degree shift, and I went from worrying about myself and not really caring about what I was going to be doing to all of a sudden I'm worried about this little kitten and I want to make sure that he has a great life as well as his litter mates. So I think that was a really important shift in my life right there. Yeah, that's really, that's beautiful. And now there, as we talked about, there was like a scary moment when he was gone. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? And then how, you know, we, we talk about kismet and fate, and then there was like a reuniting of the two of you. Can you share that story? Yeah, we, uh, I, I came back to my barracks after a day of work in the motor pool and when I happened in there and, and walked out back with a, a packet of tuna to, to feed to the, the litter cats, the stray cats, like I did every day after my first night scout, I went out there and none of the cats came around to meet me like they normally would. And when I asked somebody at the at the desk of the barracks what had happened, they told me that the uh, animal control had come through and had captured all of the cats and taken them away. So it was it was a heartbreaking incident right then and there, but there really wasn't much I could do about it. But the thing was, at that point in time, I had already been well, messing around and playing with these cats and taking care of them for several months. And by that point in time, ha having the experience that I did with Scout, with him crawling up on my lap and paying attention to me, and he, he didn't really care what I was feeling about as long as I was feeling good. At that point in time, he had already given me the confidence to carry on in the rest of my life. And by that time, I had already started talking to my wife, well, my current wife. My, at the time, she was just a, a friend of mine from high school. But I started talking to her, and I started up a relationship. So I didn't have Scout to go and talk to or for, for him to listen to me and make my complaint. Instead, I was able to call up my, my girlfriend at the time, and she agreed that it was kind of kind of unfortunate that they, weren't, that they weren't there, but, you know, she was there to support me as well. He was sort of a segue into bringing you into a whole new aspect of life. Can, can you tell us about when you reunited? Because that was, that was like almost like a miracle. You know, it really did feel that way. It was uh, after I proposed to my wife on uh, New Year's Eve in 2008. So 2009, we were uh, we would I would zip back home to visit her in Pittsburgh for a little while, or she would come out to Kansas to visit me for a little while. And on uh, Memorial Day weekend 2009, she came out to Kansas to visit me, and it was an extended weekend, so we were having a good time and just generally walking around the base. She decided that she wanted to go and visit the pool, so we had to go and get a bathing suit for her. So we went down to the Post PX, the, the main mall on Post. As we were walking in, there was a, a large uh, adopt-a-thon set up outside of it with these crates on either side of a, of a walkway. So as we were walking through these crates, my wife was looking around saying, ooh, I want to I want to adopt a, a feisty female cat. Let's see if they have one of those. It's like, okay, yeah, let, let's see if they have a feisty female. But as we were walking in, all of a sudden, this little black and white paw shoots mm -hmm. out from a crate right to my left and starts smacking me in the arm. I look inside, and it's Scout. It's this, it's this cat that I had been taking care of for so long. And he was, you know, several months older and a little bit larger, but it was him. It was him, and he knew my voice, and he wanted to be pulled out. So I, I helped him out of that crate, and I held him really close and told him that I have to, I have to adopt this cat. It's, in the, it's a necessity. It needs to be done. He has to be adopted. So he became my cat. Well, I, I'm telling you, as you're, whenever I see the video, I get like real goosebumps around that time because it was like whenever I saw the little arm come out and I'm, you're telling me the story now and I've got goosebumps. It's just so amazing because your story wasn't finished. You know, your, and you and Scout's it. story yeah. wasn't finished. That's right. Now, how has how has Scout's life, how has it changed, inspired you now? I mean, as you've gone on, and tell us a little bit about more what happened with you and Scout after the adoption. Well, Scout had an influence on me in the fact that he, just, he, he really did save my life. And 
it made me take a second look at my life and, and realize exactly what I was going through with PTSD and a traumatic brain injury and multiple concussions. And I realized that I wasn't alone. There were so many other people out there that were dealing with the same things that I was, or even worse. So what Scout did for me was he gave me the confidence to, to really pursue what I thought I could still help. I knew that I was going to be getting out of the military through a medical discharge for my condition. But what I didn't know was what I was going to be doing afterwards. And once I sat down with Scout, once I adopted him and I talked with Becky about what I could possibly do, I knew I wanted to go back to school, but I didn't know exactly how to proceed. But eventually it, it became that I would use the, uh, the post-9-11 GI Bill and I would start school at the University of Pittsburgh. And what I wanted to do was go into counseling. I wanted to help other people who were in my exact same position that I used to be in. And there are a lot of individuals out there that need that kind of help. We're not damaged goods. You know, the military people that you see from day to day, even if you see them at the VA with PTSD or traumatic brain injury, they're not damaged goods. We have tons of skills, and everybody wants to use them. And what Scout did for me was made me realize that I could be that vehicle for making sure that these individuals, these, these people with disabilities that are sitting up there at the VA or if they're walking around town looking for a job, these are the individuals that we need to be hiring. So Scout kind of, he put me on the path to helping these people, to helping myself. It's so wonderful what you're saying because it's like he didn't finish his mission. He started you on your turnaround when when you when you were initially together and then he sort of completed it, helped you to go so that actually you're inspiring and you're helping other people in what you're doing right now. It and that's so impactful, especially in the world that we're living in right now, where there is so much PTSD and and with the veterans coming home. What is there for them? I think the most important thing for a veteran with PTSD or any veteran at all to realize is that they're not alone. You know, when we were all together as as active duty or guard or reserve, you know, we we fought with our, our brothers and sisters to our left and our right. And we always relied on these people. Anytime that we were in conflict or even not in conflict, we had that reliance. And what I like all these all of us veterans to know and, and anybody who's even not a veteran is that it doesn't matter if you're not on active duty anymore. It doesn't matter that you're not around your friends anymore. There's always going to be a support group for you there. All you have to do is put a hand out. Somebody is going to grab onto that hand and pull you out of the darkness that you might be feeling. For others who may have powerful mutual rescue stories just like yours, and yours is so, so moving, and, and uh, people have to go to see that video. I mean, it's been viewed by millions and millions of people. I think that July 4th is a perfect time for people to go to see it. Where can people go to share their stories and inspire others such as yourself uh, that you did? You yeah, know, the site that I was using, the Mutual Rescue Project itself, is located at mutualrescue.org. And there's a, a link on there where you can type in and, and submit your very own story of the Mutual Rescue. It doesn't have to be a little cat popping out of the bushes and tapping you on the, on the leg and saving you from yourself. It can be going to a, a pound and finding a, a dog that's, you know, not really in the best of shape. But you know what? You're not in the best of shape either. So the two of you can work together to make everything better. But mutualrescue.org is holding those uh, those story submissions all the way up to June 30th. This, it's, and after that, you can still submit. They're very powerful. Your story is very powerful. I have to send my sincere apologies for your loss of Scout because Scout did pass over the bridge. But Scout's still doing its work. <laughs> Scout's yes, still working. Is. Yes, he's doing his work, and he was here for a purpose. And what Mutual Rescue does is show the importance of companion pets and how they do help and how they do have a purpose. You know, and I, I think that that's so wonderful. And, and Josh, I also want to thank you again for your service to our country and um, and everything that you did. And um, and I want to wish you a very happy Fourth of July. And thank you for being a guest on our show. It's been very inspiring, very heartfelt, and sharing your story um, about Scout. I thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay, thanks, and we'll be back in just a moment. Hi, Doggy Diva Show listeners. Susan Marie here to take just a half a minute to let you know how much we appreciate your being with us every week to hear great dog tips you can use with your pet, some great stories about rescues, fostering, and some heartwarming stories about second chances for pets who are now in loving forever homes. Be sure to go to our website, thedoggydiva.com, to see pictures of Miss Olive 
and other dogs we talk about on the show and get to know us a little better. That's thedoggydiva.com, D-O-G-G-Y. We appreciate your feedback, too. Okay, let's get back to the show. Want to make this holiday a safe celebration for you and your pets? Stay with us. Begging to hear more of your favorite show? Full episodes of all our shows are available on demand. Go to PetLifeRadio.com to fetch our entire lineup of possum pet podcasts. Also, dig us up in iHeartRadio and iTunes. Let's talk pets. Live and on demand only from Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We have with us Kim Gablin, Senior Marketing Manager at Bill Jack Foods. Hey, Kim, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Good. Happy 4th of July. Yes, yes. It's that time of the year, isn't it? The summer's I, really creeped up fast on us. I know. I know. So much going on. A lot of uh, a lot of sparklers and a lot of that barbecue food going on out there now. Yep, one of my favorite times of the year, you know, outside, you know, enjoying friends and family and, and having some great food. Yeah. Can, can you tell us about, you know, some details about what, how you think the 4th of July or the holiday affects the pets? Yeah, you know, yes. And, you know, I think we want to really celebrate all of these kinds of holidays with our, our pets, right, because they're part of the family. Absolutely. And so it, it, always, it, it always kind of brings up a couple of extra things that are worth looking out for. And so I, I think it's really... Um, great to be able to do that, but I think it's always really smart to be able to take some precautions and kind of watch out for the things that might happen. I, I know that for us, and I have personal experience with this, unfortunately, um, I had a party one time and I had my dog get very sick, and so sometimes it helps to kind of think of the things that might happen so that you can maybe warn your guests and look out for your best friend and make sure that they're safe throughout the party. And so I think, you know, one of the things that's always, you know, something to keep in mind is it's important to make sure that your dog has their um, dog tags on, right? some sort of identification, if they're not microchipped, uh, to make sure that if something happens and they get out, um, you know, somebody can, can return them to you. And, and it's really kind of a crazy time right now because without the loud fireworks, mm-hmm. it's re- some dogs are very, very horrified by all those loud noises. And so it's important for you to have tags on because it's one of those days that dogs get lost during the year. It's one of those weeks that, you know, dogs are always getting out, getting scared because of those loud noises. And, you know, I agree with you 100%. And sometimes when people have their dogs in the house, they go, oh, well, I won't leave the collar on. I'll just, uh, you know, it's it's hot. And But I agree with you. You should have, especially, you know, when you're going through, like, loud noises or the fireworks, the thunderstorms now that we're into the summer, your dog should always yeah. have their dog tags on. I, I personally had an experience, too, where one of my dogs had gotten out of our fence and mm-hmm. didn't have his tag on. Luckily, someone, you know, a neighbor caught him. But, I mean, sometimes people don't have, aren't that fortunate. So ever since then, and that was like 20 years ago, I have never had my tags off my dogs. Yeah, I, I've always got, I'm, my dog is microchip, so it's always a good thing yes. to be able to do that. But it's also helpful to have tags because then they can find you faster yep. right, if something happens and, and it's not a neighbor. And, and I think you mentioned another really good thing is helping keep your, your dog indoors. So if you know that it's getting to be nighttime, if you know that they're very anxious and upset by loud noises, you certainly want to make sure that you get them in the house, maybe into a quieter part of the house, maybe put on the radio, you know, something that can kind of maybe not make those loud noises be so prevalent. Yeah. But, but even if you do that, like you were saying, it's good to have their tags on because, you know, sometimes the guests accidentally let the dog out. That's happened a few times with us. Yes. And, and so, so it is really important to, you know, even though you tell them, even though you tell the dog to stay, um, sometimes that can happen. So you want to make sure that they're in a secure location um, if you're going to leave them in the house while you guys are all outside doing things as well. Absolutely. And um, and also make sure that the microchip, all that information is up to date and everything too. The contact yes. information is so important. Now, do you, how about like um, safety pits, tips like um, a kit and stuff, like first aid tips? 
Yeah, you know, you know, certainly being able to have uh, some things around in case something should happen, you know, <laughs> for your guests too, um, but hopefully not, um, but also for your dog, you know, making sure that you have that safety kit somewhere available is really, really important. Um, and certainly, you know, um, but there's also a lot of risk if you're having a party that something else could happen in terms of a dog getting food maybe that they shouldn't have. So, you know, sometimes what I do is I post signs around the house about please don't feed the dog. Oh, what a great or, idea. You know, or see me for a, for a treat for the dog because, you know, everybody just wants to make the dog happy mm-hmm. and, you know, they just accidentally give them things. And so it's important for them not to get things like grapes or um, things with onions. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, so you know, sometimes for some of my friends don't even have onions at some of their parties just to make sure that the dogs don't get into them or the cat. Um, but but some, um, some sometimes, it's, you know, if you put up some signs, that also helps people to know, hey, don't feed the dog or um, don't put your purse maybe on the ground. Um, or someplace where the dog can get into it. So sometimes we put jackets and purses in another room where the dog can't get them. Yeah, that's a great idea because sometimes people have gum in their pocket and it has xylitol in it. And xylitol yeah, and that's, so, how yes, yes. <laughs> that's how my dog got sick. Yes. That's how my dog got sick. He got into my aunt's purse one time. And so, you know, you just never know. And so if you know that sugar-free gum is bad, mm-hmm. then you would not be able to call the vet like we did and, and get him care right away so he's okay. But that's not always the case if you don't realize what they've gotten into. So, again, having some signs up and reminding guests to put their things away in another room is another way to kind of keep your dog safe. And, and obviously, you know, you may have... Um, maybe uh, beverages that are not good for the dog to have. You know, certainly um, Diet Coke is not a good thing for your dog to have, mm-hmm. but the things like alcohol that may be around, if you have that at the party, you want to make sure that, you're, that, that your guests are not leaving anywhere where your dog can get into it. Absolutely. Now, how, what are your feelings? Like, how do you feel nutrition plays? Do you think that makes a difference when it comes to, like, anxiety situations? You no, know, sure. Any kind of change, um, you know, in anxiety can sometimes spark a change in a dog's eating habits or, you know, certainly if they get into some food that might be spicy or very rich um, while they're at one of, you know, while you're having a party, certainly that can be trouble for their, their, their digestive system as well. So, you, know, you want to kind of keep them on a normal diet, you know, not be changing things too much. And, and of course, like I said, you know, you know, make sure you're giving them dog treats and dog biscuits as opposed to giving them things that really they, they shouldn't have um, as a treat. And so, you know, kind of keeping that that diet good, you know, really kind of helps them stay healthy ongoing, and that really makes a difference in your dog, you know, day in and day out. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with having a few bags of little Bell Jack treats around saying, hey, wait a minute, you can give them this instead of that cookie. You can give them this instead yeah. of a piece of your sandwich. Yeah, and it's, and it's really so easy to do. And, you know, dogs just go crazy over our treats. I know that it's so, it's so fun to watch our dog get excited about it. Mm-hmm. And, like, we get so many great phone calls from, from all the folks out there who use our treats and our food about how happy they are with their dog being on it and how easy it is to give it to them. And they love to see them get so excited. So I know that that's one thing that I like, and it's always good to have them healthy and not have to worry about them being sick, you know, um, in the house or in the backyard um, during this kind of fun and exciting time. Yeah, that's absolutely true because you want it, you want it to be a fun time. You want to be celebrating. You don't want to have to be running to the emergency room with your pet. You want to be able to celebrate with your pet. Exactly, and with, and with your friends, and I have to leave, and all that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. yeah, so absolutely, you know, there's just a couple of extra precautions to kind of keep your dog safe and keep um, everybody in the household having a great time. Uh, it doesn't take much time, but it really can make a big difference in how your weekend goes. Absolutely. Now, for people who want to learn more about Bill Jack, Bill Jack Foods, where to get it, um, the yummy food, and the you know, it's very so nutritious, and the treats. Where can they go um, to learn about that, or where can they go to get it? Yeah, you know, we always recommend that you start with our website. We have a lot out there at BillJack.com. It's B-I-L-J-A-C.com. And we've got a store locator out there, so you can find the store that's closest to you that that sells our products. Uh, You can also sign up for our Best Friends Club. We send out a monthly newsletter. It's free to join. You just uh, sign up, and then we uh, can send you tips. And we also offer uh, opportunities to be able to get coupons. Uh, every month. So it's really kind of a neat idea to be able to save some and learn some and, and treat your dog really well. And then we're also out on the, on social media, so in all the digital places. So on Facebook and Twitter on Pinterest and Instagram, then we've got some amazing training videos with Joel Silverman, who's one of the trainers that we Abs- work with. Yes. Uh, he has some great, like, you know, one to two minute training tips to be able to kind of help you um, get your dog to be uh, being in, 
you know, being a good, good a best friend to you. So you want you want to make sure that they're trained and they have really good manners right when all those people come over yeah, exactly. for your July 4th party. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you want your all your pets to be guest ready. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, well, as always, it's great information, great information for us pet parents and a great way to celebrate uh, the 4th of July to make sure that pet parents and their pets can celebrate and have a good time, a nice, safe, fun time. So, as always, Kim, you bring such great information to the show, uh, you and Bill Jack, and we thank you very much. Wish you and your whole uh, family and your whole fur family a very happy and safe 4th of July. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the same to you and to all of your listeners and friends of the Doggy Diva Show. Wishing everybody a safe and happy 4th of July with all of their guests. Thank you. Hi, this is Susan Marie and Miss Olive. Before we close, we just want to send out... Diva sparkles, and quiet and safe fireworks full of love to all of our fellow pets, pet parents, and those pets looking for their forever homes. Let freedom bark. Have a safe and happy 4th of July, everyone. We would like to thank our guests this week. And also, as our doggy divas always say, please love your pets because they love you unconditionally. And please remember to adopt, foster, spay, neuter, and microchip. And as always, please have a great Diva Week, everyone. That's all for this episode of The Doggy Diva Show. To find out more, go to our website, thedoggydiva.com. Also, find us on our Facebook page, The Doggy Diva Show, and tell your fellow dog lovers about it. Don't miss Susan Marie, Miss Olive, and The Doggy Divas right here for the next episode. See you again soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.